I'm Melissa and today I'm discussing my August 2020 favorites and I'm changing my favorites up a little bit. I thought it was getting a little stale but you guys let me know what you think about this format. But let's start off with the movies which I'm going to show you my letterbox account and everything I've watched which if you want to follow me on letterbox I will follow you back. I love that app. I love rating and reviewing movies on it and it's just a lot of fun. And I do show a lot of the movies I read on Letterboxd on my second Instagram account as well. So if you want to follow that, links are in the description below. Okay, so the first movie I watched in August was Eraserhead and I loved it. I'm a huge David Lynch fan. I have no idea why I didn't see this sooner. It's his first feature film and it's just his take on parenting and how scary that can be. The images are haunting and disturbing sometimes. The sound is just perfect for the film. It's unnerving. I really liked it. It's a favorite. If you see a heart beside the movie, it's a favorite of mine. The second one is Host, which was actually a really pleasant surprise. This is a horror movie that's on Shudder, and it's filmed during the what we're going through right now, and it just makes use of that so well. It's about a group of friends who get together on Zoom, and they host a seance and you know what could go wrong there it was just really really just ingenious and I really enjoyed it I know reviews are kind of mixed but I thought it was really really interesting and unique and I just really love the concept so I do recommend host if you haven't watched it and you're into horror you'll definitely like it I think next up this is a rewatch the Matrix. A lot of the films that I've rewatched, I'm rewatching with my dad currently because he's never seen them. So, of course, I wanted to introduce him to The Matrix, which is obviously a masterpiece. Keanu Reeves is amazing, as is Carrie Ann Moss. The next film up is The Matrix Reloaded. I actually did not hate this as much as most people do. <laughs> I really didn't. Like, okay, there's some decent scores on here, as you can see. There is a two and a half. But I just... I really really enjoyed it. I didn't like it as much as the first. It's not a masterpiece compared to the first but it's a lot of fun and you'll see that I'm on a Wachowski sisters kick this month because the next film is their first film Bound which blew me away. You know gangster flicks are really really common but they're always you know fronted by men and this one was really unique because it had Gina Gershon and Jennifer Tilly and they're playing lovers who discover two million dollars and you know things don't go that well for them but I just thought it was a really unique premise both women were excellent I thought this was such a huge departure from the Wachowski sisters other films because this is very much you know gangster it's not sci-fi the rest of their films are very much sci-fi special effects in your face this was very much subdued and more dramatic and it is one of my favorite films of theirs. It's just wonderful. The next movie up is another one that blew me away. It's a recent release. It's, I believe, on, available to rent on Amazon and iTunes. But it's Summerland. In this film, oh my gosh, I'm a huge fan of Gemma Arterton. And this film blew me away. I'm just a huge fan of British films and TV shows in general. But this just felt like being wrapped up in a warm, cozy blanket. It made me laugh, it made me cry, it made me smile. It's just great and I love Jessica Swale's previous short film. This is not a short film by the way but this is about a woman who is reminiscing about a lost love and she has a very cold heart but then she agrees to reluctantly take in a young boy who's a refugee from London and he just kind of opens her heart up and makes her realize that she's been shutting the world out. It's just wonderful. As you can see, it's got pretty high scores. Even my fiance liked it. So, <laughs> Summerland, I definitely recommend you watch it. It is just, just so cheerful. Next up is the third Matrix movie, which again, I did not hate as much as everyone else did. Look at the score. Uh, the user scores are pretty high, actually. There is a two star. But, you know, it was fun. Not a masterpiece, again, but it's fun. <laughs> this next movie. A lot of people like this movie, so take my rating with a grain of salt, but it's The King of Staten Island, and I'm just not a fan of modern comedy. I'm not a big fan of Judd Apatow or Pete Davidson. I'm just not a fan, but as you can see, there are some pretty high scores, and I just, it wasn't my 
kind of film, okay? So take that with a grain of salt. I do think Marissa Tomei and Bill Burr were really good in this movie, and there were some really heartfelt moments. But I just, it, the humor wasn't for me, so that's why I gave it two and a half. Next one up was another rewatch, Ex Machina. I adore this film. Every time it comes on TV, I rewatch it. So that's why I rewatched it. It was on TV. <laughs> Next up is Manhunter because I'm on a huge Hannibal Lecter kick. And I made the mistake of reading Red Dragon, the book this is based off of, before I watched the movie. And they cut out all the best scenes in the movie from the book. It's still a really competent thriller. But I just, I didn't like it as much as I liked the book. And it also bugged the crap out of me. Because look at the spelling of Hannibal Lecter's name right here on Brian Cox. I hate how they changed the spelling of Hannibal Lecter's name. It drove me batty. It still drives me batty. But I mean, it's not a bad thriller. And honestly, I would watch the movie before I read the book. Because the book is better and the movie cuts out a lot of the best scenes from the book. But still... It's a fun watch, and it's still exhilarating and action-packed. Next one up is Hereditary. Again, a rewatch. I showed this to my dad. I don't think he was as big a fan of it as I was. I really like how Ari Aster framed the film and how he kind of built up the tension, but my dad thought it was super slow. And that kind of sums up how most people view Hereditary. They either think it's wonderful or they're just like it's boring. Next up is Hunger. I just saw this for the first time. Oh my gosh, this was disturbing. It was depressing, but it's wonderful. Michael Fassbender, oh my gosh. His performance, which I thought he was going to be in the whole film. He's not. He's only in about the latter half, but he's so great as Bobby Sands. This is based off a true story, and I do have to say you have to be in the right headspace to watch this because it will mess you up, but it's wonderful. Steve McQueen's first film, I believe, first, first feature film. Oh my gosh, it's, it's great, it's great, but it is really disturbing, so keep that in mind. Next movie up is Daybreakers. I watched this with my dad. We both had not seen it before, and we thought it was a lot of fun. I just love vampire films in general, and this was a fresh take on the vampire genre. Ethan Hawke is great, as is Willem Dafoe, and I just... Again, I love the unique concept of Daybreakers, and I'm a pretty big fan of the Spirit Brothers. I've liked pretty much all their films besides Winchester, but this was a really good one, and I'm surprised this film has that low of a score, but as you can see, the user scores are pretty high or average, but I really did enjoy Daybreakers. It was a lot of fun, and if you're a fan of the vampire genre and you're kind of jaded by it, watch this. It's really, really refreshing. Next up, another rewatch for me, but the first time for my dad was The Silence of the Lambs. Again, Hannibal Lecter, but this is a wonderful movie. Obviously, I gave it 5 out of 5. And it's just, if you haven't seen it, you don't even ha need to know anything about Hannibal Lecter. It's just phenomenal. Anthony Hopkins is great as Hannibal Lecter, but I do have to say my favorite Hannibal Lecter is Mads Mikkelsen. <laughs> But I just, I love it. Jodie Foster's great. The story of Buffalo Bill. I mean, it's a classic. It's a classic. And if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's not that scary, in my opinion. It's more gory than anything. And even then, it's not that gory, to be honest. But again, masterpiece. Next movie up was My Own Private Idaho, because I was on a Keanu kick. I'm always on a Keanu kick, okay? So just, <laughs> I love Keanu. But he is phenomenal in this movie and this movie itself is just great and heartbreaking and wrenching. River Phoenix was so good and it just kind of depressed me knowing he passed away so early in his life. Just it's a wonderful movie. It's definitely one I want to rewatch later to try to pick up more details. It is a little it is a little sad. It's really sad actually. But it's great. The topics it covers are really hard hitting. It is a loose adaptation of Shakespeare's Henry IV, as this synopsis says. And some of the dialogue does seem very Shakespearean, so you kind of have to have that in your mind that they're going to speak in a Shakespearean dialogue at points. But I just, I love this movie. I loved the chemistry between River Phoenix and Keanu Reeves. I loved Gus Van Sant's direction. I just, I love this film. Another one that was a rewatch, Green Room. Phenomenal film, Anton Yelchin. 
rest in peace, so good, as is Patrick Stewart and Imogen Poots. I just, I love this film. It's about a group called the Ain't Rights. They go to a certain kind of bar and they end up witnessing something that they shouldn't have and they get in a lot of trouble and they have to fight for their lives. It's a pretty shocking film. It's entertaining to watch. You never really know what's going to happen. And it is my favorite Jeremy Saulnier film. And again, I just, I recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Next movie up is Project Power. It was decent. It's one of Netflix's newer big releases and I watched it with my mom and her boyfriend and all of us just thought it was average. There are some really fun moments, but it drags on way too long. Way, way, way too long. As you can see, most of the scores right here are pretty low. But, I mean, it's okay. It's a good way to waste almost two hours, but it does get a little boring at parts, at least in my opinion. But the concept of taking a pill that makes you into possibly someone with superpowers for five minutes is an interesting concept, but they didn't really utilize that concept to its fullest potential in this, which was a little disappointing. But Jamie Foxx, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Dominique Fishback all give really good performances, and it is fun, if overly long. It's decent. Now the next one up is a short that is on YouTube that you can watch right now. Well, not right now, after the video, but it's called Rebooted. And this was so charming. We watched this right after Project Power, and it's just, it mixes claymation and live action so incredibly well for such a short film. And I'm pretty sure it's probably low budget, but it's just wonderful. And it's about a skeleton who was in a film that is very reminiscent of like Ray Harryhausen style of special effects. He was in a film like that. I don't know how to describe it. But then years later he can't find a job because he's being replaced by CGI and actors that are in mocap suits. And it's just really charming and funny and a little sad, but it does have a happy ending. And I do recommend you watch Rebooted. It's on YouTube, like I said, and it's pretty short and I think you'll like it. Another rewatch. It was on TV. John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. I love John Wick. Every time it's on TV, I will watch John Wick, any of the films. Next up is 1BR, which I actually really like this film. I thought it was refreshing and unique. It is currently on Netflix. And it's just about a woman who finds this amazing apartment in LA. And it might be too good to be true. Which usually means it is. It's just the twists and turns, you never know what's going to happen. And I just thought this was a really good first feature from David Marmer. Hope I said that right. The lead actress, Nicole Bryden Bloom, was really good, as was Giles Mathay. Naomi Grossman from American Horror Story is in this. It is a very short film, but it does use its runtime effectively. And it's not particularly scary, but there are some disturbing moments. So I do recommend this. It does have a pretty low rating, but I thought it was really, really refreshing and unique, which is why I gave it four stars. Another rewatch for me, there's a lot of rewatches, guys, I'm sorry, is The Purge. My dad had never watched it, and he actually really liked it. And this is my favorite out of the franchise, just because it's set in one home. It's got Ethan Hawke and Lena Headey, who are both amazing, but Lena Headey in particular is a badass. And of course, if you haven't seen the Purge films, it's about how one day out of the year, all crime is legal, including murder, and people have to either go out and purge or hide in their homes. And this is about a family that is really wealthy, but, you know, they find out they're not so protected from the Purge. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's really good. The next one is a movie I've never seen before. And I own the dang Blu-ray, but me and my dad finally sat down and watched it, and as Inception, as you can see, I gave it five stars. It's Christopher Nolan. It's mind-bending. It's just about dreams within dreams within dreams. It's a concept that takes a lot of brain power to wrap your head around, but once you get it, it just clicks. I loved everyone in the cast, Leonardo DiCaprio, Ellen Page, Killian Murphy, um, Tom Hardy, just... This is, this is a masterpiece. It's a great film. 
and I don't know why it took me a decade to watch it. Now the next one is another amazing film. It's Persona from Ingmar Bergman. And I had never watched a Bergman film before, but this was so good. And it does have a very ambiguous ending. I have to warn you about that. But it's about this woman, Alma, who is a healthcare worker that is assigned to take care of an actress, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth won't talk. She just won't say a word. And Alma is trying to get her to talk, so Alma starts telling Elizabeth her whole story. But things start taking a turn. That's all I'm going to say because I don't want to ruin the story for you. Wonderful film. Excellent. It really makes you think. The cinematography is really simple and stark yet striking at the same time and perfectly conveys the emotions that are going on in the scene. And I just, I loved Persona. And I definitely want to watch more Bergman now. Another rewatch is No Country for Old Men. This is one of my dad's favorite films we've watched so far together and it is just a wonderful film. Coen Brothers, Javier Bardem as Anton Chigurh, it's wonderful. It is a slow burn but it's so disturbing. Anton Chigurh is one of the greatest villains in my opinion of cinematic history and it's just the story takes turns you don't expect it to and all the actors in it along with Javier Bardem, Josh Brolin, Tommy Lee Jones, Woody Harrelson, all phenomenal, great kind of western thriller action film. It's not really action. I don't know why I said that, but it's it's a classic. And that status is well deserved and I do believe Javier Bardem won the Best Supporting Actor Oscar. I could be wrong. Ah. But it's great. The next one up is Bill and Ted Face the Music. I really like this, okay? I'm a huge Bill and Ted fan, and I thought this was just charming and wholesome, and it was worth the rental price for me personally. It's just following Bill and Ted years later, after, you know, the second film, they're now older, and the Wild Stallions have broken up the band, but they're still best friends. And it's about how their daughters are friends and aspiring musicians. It follows Bill and Ted as they have marital issues with their wives. And then they find out that they have to write a song to save the world again. It's just a lot of fun. It's cute. Again, wholesome. I, I laughed a lot. I know some people said they didn't. And you, you can see their reviews are kind of mixed. But... In my opinion, if you like the first two Bill and Ted movies, you're gonna like Bill and Ted Face the Music. In my opinion, it's worth the rental price if you're a fan of Bill and Ted because it's just wonderful. I love seeing Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter together again. Another rewatch, The Magnificent Seven, the 2016 version from Antoine Fuqua. This was another one of my dad's favorites. This is a really underrated film. It didn't do well at the box office when it released. And no one really talks about it that much, but it is a really wonderful western. It's full of action. It's emotional. The cast is phenomenal with Denzel Washington, Chris Pratt, Ethan Hawke again. <laughs> I watched a lot of Ethan Hawke films this month. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, Haley Bennett, Peter Sarsgaard. It was just, it's so good. And if you haven't watched it and you're into westerns, this is a really good film. I need to watch the first Magnificent Seven, and I need to watch Seven Samurai, which inspired the two Magnificent Seven films. There's actually more than that, but we're just saying. Again, loved it. Highly recommend it if you haven't seen it yet. And the last film I watched in August was another rewatch, Requiem for a Dream. Okay, this movie will F you up. I hadn't seen this in years, and when I first watched it, I didn't really grasp what was going on, but this is about the toll addiction takes on a family and their loved ones. And that's all I'm going to say. You're going to... This is basically what D.A.R.E. should show kids, except this is not kid-friendly. But, I mean, if you don't want to, you know, start taking drugs, watch Requiem for a Dream. It will totally turn you off the idea of it. Because it is disturbing AF. But it's so good, and Darren Aronofsky, he can never go wrong with his films. 
I love I've loved every single thing I've watched from him and this is another really excellent film again though disturbing <laughs> it's really disturbing okay so those are all the films I watched in August as you can see by all the hearts I had a lot of favorites so check those films out if you haven't seen them yet but let's now move on to the TV I enjoyed in August the first show I want to mention is The Umbrella Academy Season 2. I really, really like this season. I love the first season, but this one was more serious in a way, but it also had more levity, more comedy, and I just loved getting to see these characters in a different time period, seeing how they grow over the season, and it was just... It's amazing. If you haven't watched Umbrella Academy, check it out. I can't really say what the second season's about without ruining the first season, but it is a really wonderful show. I've also been really enjoying Lovecraft Country. This is airing on HBO and HBO Max, and it's based off the novel of the same name, but this is a really unique show. Every episode feels different. It has the same characters, but it almost feels like an anthology type of show because every episode is so different and there are so many different horror elements involved with the episodes. The characters have to battle so many different kinds of creatures and they have to go through so many traumatic incidents that it's just mind-blowing to think how creative the team behind this was and how well written it is and how great the actors are. It's just a really well done show and if you're up for it definitely check it out because it's just it's original and we don't get a lot of original stuff nowadays you know. I also loved Agretzko season 3. If you've never watched Agretzko it's an anime that is on Netflix and it's about a red panda named Retzko and she is an accountant but at night she goes to this karaoke bar and sings death metal because she's venting her frustrations about her job, her love life, etc. It's just really charming. It always put a smile on my face. And the third season just upped the stakes with everything. And it still just made me smile even though there were some darker moments. It's just so lovely. Highly recommend this. It's not for kids because they do use curse words. And there are some innuendo involved. But watch it. It looks really cutesy and like for kids, but it's not. Just check it out. Thank me later. Okay, now for the games I've enjoyed in August, and I'm still currently enjoying one of them. The first one up is Lovingly Evil, which I'm not going to talk too much about because I wrote a review for The Gaming Outsider. I'll have that linked in the description box down below. But Lovingly Evil is a dating sim that is wholly original. He plays a villain who attends a conference called VCon. You get to f pretty much fully customize your character and you can choose to be whatever kind of villain you want. You have five different romance options including the big red man himself downstairs. You know who I'm talking about. It's just humorous. It's fun. There are some really fun mini games that are just the right amount of challenge and accessibility. It's a pretty quick game but it's so much fun and it does make you want to replay it to see the different romantic options you have and to play the different mini games. So definitely check out my review for it on The Gaming Outsider. I'm currently still playing through Ghost of Tsushima. I am loving this game. If you ever wanted it to be a samurai, this is the perfect game for you. It is a PS4 exclusive, but it looks so beautiful. Oh my gosh. The combat is excellent. It's this big open world and I keep getting sidetracked by finding fox dens and going to shrines and honoring them and then doing some side quests where I help people and I be the bass samurai I am and I'm trying to be as honorable as possible. But I'm just loving being Jin Sakai and just playing and experiencing this world and yeah, I just, I'm so in love with this game. It's, I'm probably going to be playing it for a while because it is a big game, but it's so beautiful and I'm loving being a samurai. <laughs> and lastly, for books that I enjoyed in August, I already mentioned this, but I loved Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. I forgot the author's name for a moment there. This is the first novel in the Hannibal Lecter series, but it mostly focuses on Will Graham trying to find a serial killer they have dubbed the Tooth Fairy. 
And it's just so interesting because you go through the book and it goes from Will Graham's perspective to the Tooth Fairy's perspective, sometimes Hannibal Lecter's perspective. But it's just so interesting to see the relationship between Will Graham and Hannibal Lecter on the page. It, this is a very, very gory, disturbing book and there are so many trigger warnings on this that just know if stuff like I can't even say it without worrying about my video getting taken down. There are just a lot of trigger warnings, okay? So be careful if you have not read this book and you're interested in it. But if you can handle it, if you don't have any triggers or anything like that, and you don't mind reading about gory material, this is an excellent novel. I cannot wait to read the rest of the novels in the series. But I fell in love with this and this totally ruined the film Manhunter for me because there were so many excellent scenes they did not show in the movie but it's just such a great book. It is long but it's a great book. I also really enjoyed The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. This is going to be a film that comes out sometime <laughs> starring Amy Adams, Gary Oldman, Jennifer Jason Lee, and Julianne Moore. But this novel is so good. It's about a woman who is agoraphobic and she spies on her neighbors and watches classic films and gets drunk every day. But then she witnesses something that is really shocking, but no one believes her because obviously she's at home getting drunk, she's on medication, she has gone through trauma that has made her into an agoraphobe. It's just really interesting to see what unfurls in this novel and I do feel the ending is a little bit rushed to be honest. But the rest of the book is so excellently paced and thrilling and I was just invested in this and I definitely want to read more of AJ Finn's work if they have any more work out. I don't actually know. I need to research that. But I'm really excited for when the movie does come out because I think it's going to be a really excellent film. So those are my favorites in August. Let me know what you thought about the new format in the comment box. Let me know what your favorites were in August or right now. If you liked the video, leave a like. Share it if you liked it. If you haven't subscribed already, click that subscription button and make sure to tap the notification bell if you haven't so you'll be alerted whenever I upload a new video. If you'd like to follow me on social media, all those links are in the description box down below the video. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!